Hello there and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 Abridged. Previously we brought World War 3 to an end with victories over the Allies in Europe, Africa and Asia, mostly due to the intervention of Luxembourg of course. We also tried to overthrow fascist USA with a communist uprising, but that failed and it leads into what is now World War 4, the Comintern vs the Treaty of Reciprocal Assistance led by the USA. Here we go then. We begin by just finishing off some business from the end of the last part where we had a pocket of USA troops trapped in Africa. Well, not really trapped since they have a port, but we're going to attack them and try to take out this pocket just so they're not here. And with that, the USA will have nothing outside of the Americas. So that will make sure this war's nice and focused. Not that that really helps because the Americas is a difficult place for the enemy to be, as we'll see. Unfortunately, it was hard to attack their final region here because it had a port and tons of troops in it. And we're in the usual no supplies situation. Tried nuking them, but then attacking immediately after the bombs dropped proved to be unsuccessful as well. I guess you would have trouble attacking on the same day a place got nuked. There'd be a few hazards around, I imagine. But ultimately we do defeat them by just spamming no organization attacks. Eventually we somehow got their organization down to the point when their divisions started getting deleted and then their strengths can go away and we can win. So we complete our African campaign. It wasn't all that good. Now we desperately need to take that port and get out of there. I started bringing all the troops back home to reorganize before we really get stuck into this war. Apparently we're slightly losing the war, it has gotten worse since the last time I checked that screen, so that's good to hear. So yes, I decided to get everything together over here in France and Luxembourg and reorganize because I had tons of infantry divisions in amongst the tank army, so now we have just a tank army and just an infantry army that will move at different speeds. And we actually have quite a lot of infantry as you can see, well relative to what we've had before that is. And that's just because manpower is being fed in from our occupied territories slowly but surely. Took a look around while I was just training the troops. Noticed that Korea appears to have joined the enemy side in the war, but they're being nuked as we can see, so that's probably not going to go very well for them. They're not going to have air superiority over their own home territory. I imagine the Comintern will take them down pretty soon. As for what we did, once I was ready, I moved to the front line of this war, that is Brazil, the place in the Americas we're still contesting. I've mentioned before that while we are contesting it with overwhelming numbers and power, everybody is half dead, there's no food, no fuel, so essentially nothing is happening. But there was a pocket of American resistance that was also in a similar situation. So I could use my two days of having supplies after I showed up to quickly take two regions this actually gains me another port. I thought this might allow me to get resupplied, but it doesn't. So we end up essentially just sitting here. I was kind of waiting for my supplies to come back, but in the end, all I did is wait for my organization to fade away due to lack of supplies, which means I can no longer attack the enemy who also have no organization. So I sent my tanks away to try and have less supplies coming in through this port or something, hoping that might help, but it's not quite enough and we end up essentially doing nothing at all for about 40 minutes. So let's just skip on. I was looking around the world during this time. I noticed the Comintern are trying something here in Alaska. The problem is they're totally choke pointed and they're just making failed attacks. So once the USA spams more stuff there, this is going to become a hell war front. We'll check back in on it later because this Alaska battle did escalate but I'll just spoil it for you now, it's not going to be going anywhere, it's essentially turning into a second Brazilian front. There's also something happening in Central America, another no supply stack where we have bajillions of units. They can't do anything because they have no organization, they're being nuked by the fascists, that's pretty good as well. Overall, this war's actually going very badly to start with, we're not really making any progress and Luxembourg are barely doing anything either. So after just being idle for a long time with no ideas on what to do, I eventually got a coup going over in Asia. I was trying to split up Manchu because they were a non-aligned faction that was forcing the Comintern to have a really long front line along them and just using up loads of divisions to occupy that area. So with a Comintern takeover of the area, while it doesn't really do anything to weaken our enemies, it might allow us a bit more strength. Well, I don't know. 
I also, during my time doing nothing, poked around the menus enough that I discovered you can upgrade your equipment, which is pretty good actually because I have maximum air experience, which is the currency you use to do the upgrades. I might as well do this, I might, have well, might as well have been doing it a long time ago, but that's just how this campaign is, we learn things eventually. So we'll have better planes, maybe that will help, I'm guessing the enemy have been doing this as well the whole time, so really we're just playing catch up rather than getting an advantage. Here's my next bit of action, when our tank divisions make it to participate in this war for Manchu. Looks like it's going to be a nuclear war, they're just going off, that's all fine. So we just arrived and then sat around building up organization for an attack. Annoyingly, our allies attacked just before I could attack, and they were successful, meaning that's less glory for us, which we don't like. But still, this war is not going to be too hard because that front line is thinly defended. We can punch through it with our pile of tank divisions easy enough. We've got some air support coming in and the nukes. Well, they just keep going off in this area. I don't really know what the AI is doing. Clearly, it's the Cometer nuking stuff, but it's not nuking anything particularly useful. Perhaps they know there's some enemy troops back there or something. Overkill, really, since you do have a limited supply of nukes. And I'm pretty sure we're fine. I guess the AI, just when it has air superiority, it notices that it could nuke something and it does. There it is nuking that same spot from earlier again. Not sure what it's doing, but maybe it helps. And again, in Korea, it nukes the same spot again. I guess it just gets in its mind that some spot is really heavily fortified and decides to nuke it rather than attacking it. In this case, probably a waste, as I said. But we do get some glory, here is the Luxembourgian vanguard, making it first into the enemy's capital tile. Not much here, everything's dead, their army's falling apart, so we're pretty much guaranteed victory here. We can just drive around and very quickly take territories, because in a rare twist, we have supply, and our tanks move real fast when they have fuel and we're not just pushing them. So we storm through Manchu, and then we go down to finish off Korea as well. They were on the verge of going since the Soviets had naval invaded the middle of Korea. But we just speed things up, of course, by storming our tanks all over the place. And that's the end of that. Now, while all that was happening, back in South America, somehow the Comintern achieved quite a lot. Their dead no supply situation has expanded out and taken back most of Brazil there. So that's looking a lot better than it looked before. Although the supply situation does remain, it's still the same number of divisions dying the same amount, but over a wider area. I guess we have a few more ports, so. Maybe it's a tiny bit better, but I'm sure the interior infrastructure in the Amazon doesn't allow you to move supplies. What we can do, though, is storm in to finish off this pocket of Americans. And you might note the icon on the soldiers of Luxembourg has changed. That's because I've replaced our infantry battalions with shock troop battalions. This basically gives us a little bit more attack. I think you have to spend more production points or something to make them, but that doesn't really matter for us. So our troops are better and now their icon more suits their reputation. Obviously we want to attack as soon as possible because we're going to be in the same state as the enemy soon enough. In this case though, this attack goes perfectly. We run out of supplies but we still have enough organization to attack all of the remaining regions in the pocket. All the things in this pocket had like no organization, they've been trapped here for ages. So they just get pushed back real easy and once they're pushed back into a single region, they'll start dying. Now we just have to gradually kill them in this sort of weird setup where because the game doesn't represent units being en route to somewhere until they're already there, stuff is just sort of teleporting around as far as we can tell, suddenly dying and then disappearing as the game deletes these USA troops. But all that aside, this was real good. We just took out something like 100 USA divisions in that pocket, so that's going to punish the USA heavily and free up all these units on our side who don't have to sit here surrounding the pocket anymore. So there you go, we didn't participate in the war for a very long time, but once Luxembourg suddenly make a comeback, you know it's Luxembourg, we instantly wipe out 100 divisions and clear up a pocket. We're back in town, baby. Now the Ice Boys are currently busy facing off against Paraguay. Our allies did a bit of a naval landing, but again have got stuck just piling on infinite numbers of divisions so that they can't have any organization. So we need to try and sort things out for them here. And the way we can do it is nukes. We have to go through this single choke point region to attack the rest of Paraguay. And since they just put all of their army there to stop us, we nuke them. And that's going to be nice and efficient. We just killed like 10 divisions worth of stuff with that nuke. 
It wasn't enough though because the Ice Boys aren't very good at making attacks. We need the enemy to be very weak to break through, especially in mountainous terrain and things like that. So I do have to nuke them a second time, then things start looking a bit better. And with the Paraguayan army now in tatters, we can start thinking about just occupying everything. I actually do have to nuke them even more to progress, but it's going well, suffice to say. As for the rest of my army, they got very much bogged down by this opportunity I noticed. There's an unoccupied part of the front line here, along the coast of Brazil. So I thought, well, I'll go and put my troops in it so we at least take that area. However, moving between regions there takes an extremely long time. Obviously, it's jungly. We run out of fuel instantly. It's all going wrong. The worst possible setup for us. So that's happening in the background. Essentially, nothing is happening. But the Ice Boys are now the stars of the show, as I'm just microing them to try and advance against Paraguay. And as we just saw, we're nuking them any time any resistance is offered. We do have quite a few nukes in the bag at the moment, so we can afford to use a few. And there goes another one. We've taken all of their coastline now, so we just have to push up into the mountains to finish off their army. And that will be the end of Paraguay. And this is another situation where it's closing off a front. So it's going to free up a bunch of allied troops and potentially persuade them to stop sitting here dying. And because it needs to be Luxembourg leading the attack, the Ice Boys will have to pretend to be Luxembourgian for now. We're also moving in our air force to help out on this front, but this has the same supply issue in that the bases need to be supplied. So what actually happened was my air force landed in the Amazon and then sat there not doing any missions because they had no fuel and I didn't notice. So nothing is happening there effectively. Then there was this Ecuadorian war. Our allies have already taken the coast of Ecuador, but the enemy control the mountainous interior and everybody has no supplies as usual once again, so literally nothing is going to happen. A running theme with this whole supplies mechanic, it's stopping us from doing anything really. I was continuing my very slow march up the Amazon coast, but then I actually withdrew because our allies made a naval landing further up the coast in a more useful location near some enemy naval bases. So I circled around by sea to come and fight over here instead with my infantry at least. And very quickly, we move to the east and take one more naval base. But yes, even before moving one region out of the ports, we're out of supplies again. So just doing absolutely anything on this front is a real struggle. Although it's mainly a struggle because our allies are here. I'm sure if it was just Luxembourg, our small elite divisions would be able to be in supply or something. And that might go fine. So as long as it's not Luxembourg's fault, the propaganda remains. From this location, I essentially did a whole bunch of head-butting battles where I have no supplies or organization and I'm just constantly trying to dislodge this enemy unit in front of me that also has no organization. Because if we could advance one more tile, we'd capture that airbase which might come in handy. And we did actually defeat that unit, but someone else instantly replaced them. I ended up giving up on this dream, especially because I noticed a certain opportunity nearby. I noticed at the other end of this front, the enemy aren't defending at all, and the other end is the more interesting end because it's the end that leads out of the jungle and towards ports and stuff. So I ended up switching sides, actually somehow got some supplies back after capturing this completely undefended region, and then we can just keep going. I was a bit suspicious of this, I was like, is this an ambush or something? Why are they defending the interior, but not the coast where all of their supply lines are? But they're just not. So we can move on and capture some key locations now. Most importantly, we can walk towards some supply bases and get out of the horrid mess of the Amazon. We very quickly capture a whole bunch of places. There were loads of regions here that were just undefended. So now we're in supply, we've got good organization, and we can now fight outside of the jungles. The capture of that island airbase is particularly good because places on islands aren't supply bottlenecked by the supply routes onto the mainland. Therefore, they sort of effectively have a lot more supplies. So basing all of the planes on the island air bases makes a big difference, meaning they're going to actually help us, but we don't really need their help. We're just powering forwards. We capture more regions easily. There are a few USA divisions in the area, but are now pretty substantial. Luxembourgian Vanguard can easily push them back. Meanwhile, they are dropping nukes on us again. I think there they were nuking an airfield and you do 
lose the planes and crew if your airfield gets nuked as far as I can tell. So that's all good stuff. But yes, we power on. You can see I'm pushing to get towards the place where the Ice Boys were left the last time we invaded Venezuela and we do manage to get over there. The Hell War for Ecuador continues as the Comitern sends wave after wave of starving guy into the mountain to try and dislodge the enemy doesn't work so well but we have found success we capture more supply bases and air bases and push the enemy back they're starting to get a bit concentrated now though we've pushed back so many divisions that they do have quite a few defending the new front line it's also a river line also our reinforcements are being nuked there not all that good but it's actually kind of good I suppose because the issue we have now is that once our advance slows down the allies will start to catch up, our allies will start to catch up, and they're going to eat everything. I do at least deign to gain aerial superiority over this theatre to stop ourselves being nuked. But yes, this is the end of the fun, because we're out of supply again before we can move anywhere else. A massive pile of Comitern divisions just drives their way into our newly captured territory and ruins everything as usual. I started looking around and saw a pretty impressive sight. It looks like the Soviet Union has thrown something like 200 divisions onto this little island spit off the edge of Newfoundland, and that's pretty dangerous. They don't appear to be advancing against the small enemy garrison in front of them. And I was just like, if I was the USA, I would just nuke the corner of Newfoundland to pieces. There's a chance to take out like 150 divisions worth of troops with a couple of nukes there easy. Luckily, the enemy haven't noticed, but the AI's mistakes continue to pile up. We just have to hope the USA doesn't see that juicy target. And yes, the whole supply issue thing is now just becoming mind-bogglingly difficult to deal with. There's no way to stop the AI from just using up the supplies doing nothing, which means we can't do anything either because they're taking up all of the useful spots and potential places we can attack the enemy in seems like such a massive AI flaw. Maybe factions just aren't meant to have this many troops because the supply cap everywhere is too low to do anything really in this campaign. So yes, this front now fails for that reason effectively. I pulled my troops back to the islands because on the islands we can get supply. So we can sit there having supplies, training up there since we have been de-leveled by replacement troops. Watching as the Caribbean gets nuked, we do have air superiority over the Caribbean, so it's safe for me to sit on these islands, and not safe for the USA to be sitting on them. I'm guessing they're sitting on them, but we don't have any intel. Somebody's nuking somebody over there, maybe there's something really important on that one particular island. Anyway, we eventually come back into the fight, doing the classic get some supplies and then quickly attack before you run out thing, and we're able to push the enemy off that all-important corner mountain tile so that's a nice place to advance to my tanks are here now as well they have no supplies but i'm waiting here for the opportune moment to attack you can see the enemy happen to be pulling most of their troops out of that one region and the moment they're gone we push in and easily defeat what's left and there you go now we can advance and take that region the thing is though with my tank divisions them having no fuel is a big deal. They seem to get massive debuffs in combat and they actually get very rapidly defeated. We kind of ping pong in and out of this region a few times as nearby enemy divisions attack us. Even here with the river to help us defend and with numbers on our side, we're not able to resist that enemy low supply counter attack. Inconvenient for us, but makes sense since it's all tanks and mechanized infantry, I suppose. So we end up with a similar front line to before, but a little bit better. And then I gave up on that front again and instead moved back down the coast back into the jungle because there are quite a few enemy divisions with literally no organization sitting around defending the jungle so it's one of these cases where somebody just needs to attack them and then we'll win but the ai doesn't think of that i'm guessing the ai won't attack unless it has a certain amount of organization even if any attack will succeed so we just have to do it for them in the meantime, I'm doing a straight up naval invasion. I kind of started to discover the naval invasion mechanic at this point in the game. And I realized we could use it to move onto some enemy islands using the islands we control already. This is actually much more dangerous than I figured it was when I was doing it first. Cause I was just like, hey, I'm taking these islands for free. This is nice. 
but I'm taking islands but with no naval supply route to my army, so unless I can take an island that has a dock on it technically, then we're not going to be being supplied. I don't know how we got here in the first place, I guess we can't put supplies here in the same fashion, so we have to win now, otherwise we'll get our organization drained down to zero and then potentially get deleted. The issue is that these tank divisions probably aren't all that suited to making these straight crossings. We don't have any amphibious capability, and I'm guessing, based on real life anyway, it's difficult to do a naval landing with a lot of tanks at once because they take up a lot of space and such. And as it happens, we actually fail to make an attack on a port, but then get saved by the fact that the guys in the port immediately counterattack, die real fast, presumably because they're now debuffed having to cross a strait. We immediately make the crossing again, and their unit gets deleted because it was stuck in the corner there. So there we go, we have actually now supplied, or secured, sorry, a supply line for our tank divisions to sit on the islands. Although that's going to go away, obviously, because the Comintern's about to put 200 divisions on those islands. You know the drill, but we have made some progress. And we do also take out all of those USA divisions that were stuck in the jungle with another surround and delete maneuver. Then we can move back to the coast and try to find some food. Overall, then, the South American theatre's looking a bit better. <laughs> there are still many issues which will only be resolved by us because the AI can't advance. So we'll have to look into finishing the enemy off, but there's some promise. And with my new discovery of naval invasions, we're going to go into a phase of doing something similar to the USA Pacific campaign in World War II. We're going to island hop across the Caribbean to move towards the USA with the ultimate goal of preparing the nightmare invasion, an actual grand scale invasion of mainland USA. And that's going to be extremely difficult, as we'll see.